Hello. Today I'd like to talk about uh, making pipes for the Project RZ500. Uh, a lot of you out there are probably familiar with uh, this idea. It's the Yamaha TSI specification for exhaust pipes for this engine. Unfortunately, no one makes any of these. You can't buy them from Jolly Moto or anybody else as far as I know. So they gave you, Yamaha was nice enough to give us the specs for how to make these. Unfortunately, it's not very easy to do, but it can be done. Um, so what I decided to do was convert that and all of its pieces to a design that would fit our bike. And this is kind of what it looks like when each uh, cone section is transferred to an AutoCAD design. Uh, basically, the whole idea is to turn a picture that looks like this, in this case the last cone, to a piece that looks like this, which is the flat layout, cut it out in sheet metal, and roll it up into a cone shape so that it actually looks like this part right here. Then you can fit and weld it all together. That's the basics of the project. Uh, in future sections of this video, I'm going to show you about how I started to form each and every one of these cone sections and weld it. Also, there's a detail on the flange, how that bolts to the cylinder, uh, O-ring sealing, how that seals the uh, pipe to the cylinders, and things like that. So, let's go out in the workshop and see what we can do. And this is what the uh, individual pieces look like, traced from the patterns and laid out on a sheet of metal. Um, the metal I'm using is 20 gauge cold finished steel. Um, it's more expensive than buying the hot rolled stuff but don't waste your time buying that hot rolled garbage because it's nowhere near as good a quality of steel as this. Um, as you can see this there's absolutely no scale on there. It's bright finished steel. Uh, it welds really nice. All you have to do is just hit it lightly with a stainless steel brush before you start your weld joint and you're good to go. That black stuff, you gotta grind or brush all that oxide off first and it's just a pain in the butt. Um, so it's definitely well worth it buying uh, the higher quality material. What you can see I'm working with right here, it's kinda hard with the glare, this is basically a half of a sheet of steel that I'm left with and I've already cut uh, one section or one pipe, complete pipes pieces worth out of it. As you can see I've only used about a foot worth of steel so far. So it goes a long way. Um, and now we're going to cut them out and form them up. Now we're going to show you how we roll all these pieces. We've got them all cut. And uh, one of the things that I do to help uh, make things understandable so you don't get things messed up. When I write my numbers on there, that all means that as you stack, let's see, where's L2? Here's L2. When you go to stack one on top of another once these are rolled, you want to be able to read them so that they stack from L1 being the top of the pipe where the flange is and going all the way down to the end of the pipe. Um, so that just helps it out. And then also so that all of your text is right side up. Because what happens is the length of this line is just a little bit longer than the length of this one, which causes the mitered taper of the piece. Um, so it might not sound like a whole lot, but it's only a difference of maybe one millimeter on a lot of these pieces. And once you've got it rolled, it's not always very obvious which end is which. So when you do it this way, it helps. Also, I'll make sure that the writing is out. So one of the things we'll do first is we'll, it's a term called back rolling. You take your piece and you get it inside your slip roll machine. And you stick it in on the back side. And what that does is it puts a small uh, curve in there with no straight uh, section in there. If you were to do it from the front side, you end up with a straight section and that goofs you up. You don't want that. So once you get your depth set, or your pressure I should say, give that just a little bit. And for this one, because the radius is so small, I'm going to do it a little bit more. And then we'll feed it from the other side, which is the proper side to feed it from for when you're rolling it. I don't know if you can see this degree of, of kink that it gives it, but there's no straight to that. It's, it's just a pure radius. Now if you were to feed it from the front side, 
of the roller, you would end up with a small section of this which would be straight and then it would hit the radius. So we want to try and avoid that. So we're going to we're going to back roll each end, each end of the piece. Do it with your printed side outward so that, that way you can read it once it's rolled. And then we'll just go ahead and feed it through. Each time, give it a little bit more of a turn on, the, on your knobs. And then it rolls it up more and more each time. There's, a, there's always a temptation to want to go ahead and crank those babies down and hit it all in the first turn. You don't want to do that because then you're going to end up with a piece that's not what you want. You're always better off to go slow. time we're almost there and now we've hit our bend radius back these off leave our tension slip the roll out and you end up with a piece that looks like this and then of course we'll have to take our mallet and tap it around a little bit to get this so it hits just fine but that's how you roll your first piece, and that's how all the rest of these get rolled. And we'll take it from there. Okay, what you see in front of you are all the basic parts to make the pipe. There are 16 individual sections that make up this entire pipe. Uh, to give you an idea of what it looks like, here's the first section. The elbow, these cones start to diverge from there. From here it miters on to what starts to be the belly section and then from there you have the converging cones that fit on there. So I've basically broken it down into three groups. It makes it easier uh, when we're doing the, uh, the prep work to get all of our pieces welded in the right position which you kind of do it in chunks and that way we can adjust these three sections all together for the complete fitted pipe. Now to start with I uh, fabricated this flange to fit. It's basically a copy of the original RZ500 uh, flange. It's made out of quarter inch thick material and I basically just modeled it off of that. Um, I took a die grinder and I opened up a bevel on the inside of one end. The reason for that is on the first section here it has to slip like that and this is what's going to bolt up into the cylinder. Um, the rest of this assembly is there's a steel ring here which is uh, a piece of uh, tubular stock cut down to about a quarter of an inch thick. It slides over the fabricated first uh, straight piece of the pipe and then we have to set our depth when we go to weld it because it slides around on here wherever we want to go. Uh, we have to have a compression depth for this o-ring anywhere between uh, this step has to be anywhere between 75 thousandths and 112 thousandths from here to that edge. So we're going to go ahead and set that depth so that there's a proper amount of compression on this o-ring so that when the flange tightens it in it'll seal it. Um, my first attempt I tried welding it. Um, I'm using a gas welder. I don't have a TIG machine so I just use a torch. Unfortunately I get too much buildup with this fillet weld and as a result when you put this onto this your depth ends up being so thick that when you go to put this on you, your nuts only got a few threads catching and that's, that's not good. So what I did was I changed the thickness of this band down to a thinner piece of material. I think what I'm going to do is use this brazing rod to braze the joint instead of uh, welding it. That way it will the braze has capillary action, it will suck down into the joint better and hopefully uh, that will leave uh, less of a lump here so it'll go ahead and fit up better. And then once I'm done with that, I have uh, the next five sections of the elbow 
each uh, piece has been cut and rolled to shape and then welded and then I've got all these taped together there's five pieces here and then we'll tack weld each one together along with this straight piece and that will form the first portion of the header so we're gonna start uh, off with our brazing here and set this up and then we'll weld this on there and take it to the next step